My demonstration based videos on how to approach GTs helped a lot of people and so I decided to take up another frequent asked topic in a similar manner that is approaching queue banks. So in this video I'll be explaining to you all the basics of queue banks that is when to do it how to do it and how to bookmark the queue banks. And all of this will be supplemented with an amazing flowchart that I've made after sitting down and analyzing my own queue bank strategies. I'll show and explain the flowchart in the video in a while after explaining all the basics and this flowchart will also be available on my Telegram group the link of which will be in the description. I've not seen any such algorithm anywhere so far so I hope this helps you out a lot. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Nikhil and I've secured an All India rank of 2011 in NEET PG 2023. So let's get started with the video. So firstly, let us cover the basic strategy to be followed. So the basic strategy is that you do a subject and after doing every topic of the subject, you do the queue bank of that topic. And once your whole subject is done, you move on to the subject wise test or the TND and then you analyze it. Now, if you're someone who has just started doing the classes, that is who has just started with the preparation from scratch. In that case, I'd advise that try to do a queue bank after every topic, but don't worry too much about it. So let's say you're doing classes, may, it may be physical, it may be online, but whatever it is, after the topic in the class is done, try to do the queue banks of that topic on the same day or at least within the next three days. Again, don't worry if you're not able to do all of them because the queue banks, if any are left, can be done in the revision cycles as well. It isn't necessary to finish all of the queue banks to get a decent rank in NEET PG. Now that is after the topic, but after an entire subject is done, then go on and give it subject wise test or TND. These SWTs and TNDs will give a bird's eye view of the subject to you and it will help you identify what your weak points are in that particular subject. Now, how can SWTs help you in queue banks? So let's say for example, you finished a certain subject. Let's say you finished medicine and now you gave it SWT and uh, say for example, there are 50 questions and you got uh, 35 correct and 15 wrong. Now you can look at the 15 wrong questions and see what topics are there that you got wrong and cross check that if you've done the queue bank of those topics or not. So if you've not done the queue banks of those topics which you got wrong, you can focus those queue banks more, you can prioritize those queue banks more than the other ones. For some small topics, in fact, I found that if I don't have time to read for it, I would directly do its queue bank and a lot of the content will still be covered in it. Now, another frequently asked question that I've gotten is what queue bank questions are to be added in your notes? The questions that you got wrong, are all of them to be added to the notes? And what about the correct questions? So the shorthand answer is that you don't need to add all of the wrong queue bank questions to your notes. Add the wrong queue bank questions to notes only if they are PYQs or if majority of people have gotten them correct. So let's say more than 75% or more than 80% people, if they have gotten it correct, then you should add it to your notes. That means something is missing from your preparation. But if there's a question in which you got wrong and only 20 to 30% people have gotten it right, then that may just be an odd question. You don't need to worry too much about it. And same goes for factual questions as well. Factual questions are different. Factual questions have to be revised repeatedly. So let's come over to how to use queue banks effectively by use of bookmarks. So on most of the platforms out there, there are three types of bookmarks in queue banks: the star, the standard bookmark and the question one. So what questions to use these for? Firstly, the star bookmark is the one which you use for PYQs and the questions which you got wrong, but more than 75 or 80 percent of people have gotten it correct. So basically the questions which a majority of people have gotten correct, but you have gotten wrong. Those are the ones you star mark. What about the standard blue bookmark? You do a standard bookmark for a question if you got it wrong, but a majority of them got it right and it is not a PYQ question. So this question might be on a very basic concept that everyone must know, which has not been asked before, but is potentially going to be asked. So if majority of the people got it correct, that means this is something simple that you should not get wrong. Now third is the question bookmark. Use this bookmark for all the questions that are unheard of or that are not in your main notes. Now all of this might be a little confusing, but in a while I'm going to be showing you the flow chart and that should clear all of the things down. Now how to review this question mark wale bookmarks. So what you do is you finish a read of all of the subjects and then later you do custom modules selecting only the question bookmark questions. Do this for all the questions and then you can change the question bookmark to the standard one if it is something that many people have gotten right or you can just remove that bookmark entirely if less number of people have gotten right or if it's not a PYQ. Now what is the review priority of these bookmarks? So the priority in which you review them is first priority goes to star mark questions then the standard bookmarks and then the question mark bookmark. Now all of this might be a little confusing but it will get cleared with the flowchart that I'm about to show you. So let's go right to it. So let's say you encounter a question in a queue bank. The first thing that you should ask yourself is if it is a PYQ question or not. In case of Marrow, this will be the questions that will have the hashtag recent need below it. So if the question is a PYQ question, then you will do the star mark bookmark for such questions. So if it is a PYQ, go ahead with the star mark. If it is not a PYQ, go to the next step and ask yourself whether you get got it correct or wrong. Now if you got it wrong, did more than 75% people get it correct? If the answer to that is yes, then you would have to star mark this question. If the answer to that question is no, that is more than 75% didn't get it correct, then go ahead to the next question. That is, is the question known or in main notes? If the question is known, that is it is in your main notes, then just do a standard bookmark for this question. But if the question is unknown or unheard, then go ahead with the question mark. Now, if you got the question correct, ask yourself the same question again. That is, is the question known or in main notes? 
If it is known to you, then generally you don't need to bookmark this question because it is in your notes and you got it correct. But if it is not known, if this question is missing from your notes, then it might be possible that you got this correct by guess work and so you mark it with the question mark. Now guys, just sit down and study this flowchart by yourself. Once you understand the basic concept behind this flowchart, then you'll get to know how to bookmark questions by yourself. So the basic point of this flowchart is that you definitely want to prioritize the PYQs. That's why the first question you ask yourself is whether this is a PYQ or not. And if it's a PYQ, then go ahead to the star mark. If it's not a PYQ, then the rest of the flowchart deals with how do you bookmark non-PYQ questions. Now remember that this flowchart, this algorithm and the values are not to be taken as concrete. This flowchart I've made on the basis of my own personal experience. So like for example, this 75% value, don't take it as a concrete one. By your own experience, you'll get to know as you study over time, what questions are important, what are not, what topics are important, what are not. So focus on understanding the basic concept, the basic principle behind this flowchart and once you understand that, then you can personalize it and modify it as per your own will. Also understand that question bookmarks are dynamic. You may have bookmarked the question earlier, but you may remove the bookmark later because you know the question very well now. Or you may change a star mark to a standard one, or you may change a, change a question mark to a standard bookmark. Just understand that question bookmarks are dynamic and as you keep on studying, as you keep on practicing questions, then these bookmarks might change. Now, what is the use of all of these bookmarks? These bookmarks are going to help you to revise more efficiently and have more concise content towards the end of your preparation. Just keep following this bookmark strategy over time and in your revision cycles, you'll realize that you have the exact correct questions bookmarked. Your PYQs will all be star marked and so you can just simply do a custom model with all the star mark questions and you can ensure that you are getting all the PYQ seen. Now, all of this might sound very complicated, but I'll make it easier by showing you a demonstration on a QBank that I had done during preparation. Since my marrow plan has now expired, I'll have to stick to a free QBank. And so for the sake of this video, I've chosen the pneumonia QBank from Medicine because this will be a clinical QBank with clinically oriented questions and that is going to be the pattern of the exam now. So guys, let's hop on to the pneumonia QBank here. Now, this is a great QBank to follow because in this particular QBank, I had gotten many questions wrong. As you can see, I had gotten 9 correct and 11 wrong. Still, it shows that I have performed better than 70% of all the peers. So, the first thing that this should tell you is that this QBank was inherently tough and there were inherently unknown questions in it. Because even after getting so many wrong, I am still in the 70th percentile. So, that is one way in which you analyze. So, for example, if you got a lot of questions wrong in a QBank, and this percentile score is lesser. That means your concept is getting weaker somewhere and you need to focus on it. But in this particular QBank, even after getting wrong, I have a greater percentile. 70 percentile is fairly good. So it's not too much of a bad thing. I just had to review this and I'll get it cleared. Let's go into the review. Now the first question is, which of the following organisms can cause both typical and atypical pneumonia? The answer was Legionella and I marked staph aureus. Now, in hindsight, this was a pretty stupid mistake, but okay. So the first thing that you see over here is the hashtag. The hashtag is the common. So this does not have the hashtag of recent need or aims. That means this is not a PYQ. So according to the flowchart that I just showed you, you don't have to mark it as star mark. That's the first thing that's cleared. The next thing is, did a lot of people get this correct? So around 45% people got this right, which is less than 50%, but that is fine. That's not a lot of people. But the next question I'll ask is, is this in my notes? So at the time, this was not in my main notes. So I bookmarked it with the question mark bookmark. Now, this is not a conceptual question. This is just a fact-based question that Legionella pneumonia presents as both typical and atypical. But since it is not a PYQ and not many people seem to have gotten it correct anyway, that means that this question is a little less likely to be asked. So I didn't mark it with the standard. I definitely didn't do it with the star because it's not a PYQ and not many people got it correct. Now, below it is the pearl of typical versus atypical pneumonia. I have not bookmarked it myself because I guess uh, during that time, this was a strong topic for me and so I didn't uh, bother bookmarking it. Anyway, let's move to the next question. There's an outbreak of Legionella pneumonia in the hospital, which of the following is least likely to have played a role in the transmission of the organism. The answer is home split air conditioners. Now, this was technically something that is not in my notes. Now, observe all the facts. This was not in my notes and 14% people have gotten it correct. So, very less people have got it correct. But, just look at it. It has the hashtag recent need. It is a PYQ. So, this has to go into the star mark. This might be a little odd question or something that is not commonly taught in the notes, but it is a PYQ. So, it can be asked again. Now, exactly this question being asked again is a little less likely, but sometimes that does happen. And so anyway, if this is a PYQ, so this should definitely go by your eyes during the revision cycles. So I've bookmarked it with star mark. Now onto the next question. It's a long clinical question. Basically, the answer here is Legionella. So this clinical scenario shows atypical pneumonia and uh, the cause among the options is Legionella. Now, I got this correct and this was a pretty easy question too. Anyway, I just got it correct and it was in my notes as well. So I didn't bother bookmarking it. Now onto the next question. In this case, urinary antigen detection test is recommended for diagnosing patients with the answer here was Legionella pneumonia again. Now, in general, if you observe with QBanks, uh, QBanks cluster similar topics together. So that can be one bias that you have to be careful of. So for example, the previous question was also of Legionnel. Now, if you know this bias, then you can go hop onto the next question and maybe even get it correct. But that was because of the bias during solving QBanks. If you get this question in your GT randomly, then you might still get it wrong. So this is just an observation that I made in QBanks and this bias is something you should be aware of. Anyway, this is a question that I gotten wrong and around 45% people have gotten it right. So not too many people have gotten it right. But anyway, this was not in my main note, so I question marked it. 
Now, how to go about this question mark bookmarks? I'll come to it shortly. Let's move on to another question here. It's a three-month-old male child with history of fever and respiratory distress, suspecting pneumonia. CXR was ordered. Most likely causative organism. The answer here is staph aureus, which I got correct. So this year, I guess, was uh, pneumatoceles, which is seen with staph aureus. Uh, the others were not done, sir, because uh, you know Streptococcus pneumoniae has uh, lobar consolidation. Klebsiella has the bulging fissure sign, and Mycoplasma has an atypical presentation. This is not the kind of it. Now this question, as you can see, has the hashtag aims there, so it is a PYQ. Now I should have bookmarked this as star marked, and maybe that is what I'd done earlier. But later during review, I may have found out that this question was too easy for me. Like uh, this question is too easy. Even the concept is easy that staph aureus causes such sort of pneumatoceles. So that's why I changed the bookmark from star mark to uh, standard bookmark. So this is the point that I want to emphasize here that this flowchart is to be personalized as per your own preparation. Again, you can go down and go into the explanation. Klebsiella shows the bulging fissure sign. They've shown that Strypto show causes lobar pneumonia, as I told you, and Myco causes atypical. Now another example of a PYQ question which I didn't mark as star mark. So here's a 30 year old HIV positive with fever for three weeks, dry cough, significant weight loss, retrosternal chest pain, CXR given below. So they have given a chest X-ray with an HIV positive man. This itself should get you thinking towards the, the pneumocystis gyrovaki pneumonia. It may be something else too, but the first thing that should pop in your head is this. And even the chest X-ray confirms the findings. There is a patchy consolidation here. So patchy consolidation in HIV positive patient with the symptoms suggest uh, pneumocystis pneumonia. And that is the answer here. So this is a recent need question. It's a PYQ and I may have bookmarked it as star mark, but later during review, I found it to be too easy and I made it a standard bookmark. So what this will do is towards the very end when I'm reviewing only my star mark questions, this question will not come in it, but this question was easy for me. So only those questions which were more difficult and which were even more important PYQs, those will get reviewed later towards the end when I'm reviewing the star mark questions. Now here's an example of an unusual question that I got correct. So in this case, uh, the answer is D, aerosolized pentamidin used in treatment. Only 27% people got it correct. Probably Probably at that time, I had done elimination and some thinking to get it correct. But anyway, I've gotten it correct and it's a PYQ too, so I've bookmarked it as star mark. Also, noting the fact that less number of people got it correct. So this may just be a guess, a luck factor that I've got it correct. But I may not get it correct if it randomly pops up, say, in a grand test. So I've bookmarked it as star mark, so I get review it later. I hope that this demonstration made the points that I explained in the flowchart even more clear. Now, how to utilize these bookmarks while doing custom modules? If you've done your first read and you're now starting up with your first revision, firstly, what you can do is do custom modules of only the question bookmark questions. Now, the question bookmark is the least priority, but earlier on in the preparation, you've got to clear out your bookmark questions so that they don't cause a clutter toward the end of your preparation. And besides that, after doing your first read, you will have a greater idea of concepts, your integration will be a little better. And now, while reviewing these questions for the second time, you'll get a better idea of whether that topic is important or not. And so you can change the bookmarks. You can either remove it or you can convert it to a standard. Other than doing the question bookmark questions, you can then do other custom modules with only the star mark and the standard bookmark questions that you have done of the subjects. Now, this strategy that I'm telling you is for the first revision. That is when you're still building up concepts, still integrating things and still getting things in your head. From your second revision onwards, you got to increase the focus on the PYQ topics only. By this time, you would have reviewed your other bookmark questions and changed the bookmarks a little bit here and there so that the star mark questions by now are only the highest yielding questions for you. So from the second division onwards, you can do custom modules with only the hashtag recent need or with only the star mark questions. If you bookmark according to the algorithm that I mentioned, your star mark questions will now include PYQ questions and the questions that you should know but you got wrong initially. Now if one of these questions that you had gotten wrong initially, you are getting right now very frequently and it has become very easy for you, then you can remove the star bookmark from it as well and you can convert it to a standard one. And what this will do is it will tone down the number of MCQs that you have to revise towards the end even more. Ultimately, the basic principle is that PYQs and PYT, that is previous year topics, should form the base of your preparation. You might consider mingling around with the other topics only during the start of your preparation, that is during your first read or your first revision maybe, when you're just clearing out all the concepts. But as you keep going ahead, you have to keep toning down the things as well as your notes and make them even more concise. So in short, QBanks form a very essential part of the preparation, but only if you use it smartly. Because there's a lots of questions in the QBanks and if you keep doing every one of them and if you don't bookmark smartly, then you might get lost towards the end and towards the end by the time when, you, uh, when you're revising the stuff, then you won't have the clarity of which questions to do, which questions to review. You'll just be lost and you won't know what to do. And that is where this bookmarking strategy comes up. So I hope that this flowchart and the demonstration help you out. Keep following the flowchart and keep using your QBank smartly. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Then. Bye.